Hi ladies and gentlemen, today we're fishing in Washington on the Snake River with guide GL Britton from Double Spay Outfitters. And GL is a great guide, we've fished with them before. GL, what do you expect us to catch today? Oh, I think uh, we'll have a chance to catch some fish, hopefully. It's uh, steelheading. This year has been uh, gotten off to a slow start on the snake. Our water temps have been higher than normal, but if we stay persistent and keep our heads in the game, I think we can at least get a hook up or two. Well, let's give it a shot. Sounds, Sounds great. The evening before our trip, GL gave us some lessons on how to spay cast. I mean, you make it look so easy, but I, I'm uh, thinking... <laughs> no, it, it it takes a while, but it, yeah. it's not not impossible. So again, you're yeah. taking your steps downstream, lift, drag, pivot, pause, shoot. Soon, Steve is casting like a pro. Good. Then it was my turn. Okay, so start down here is where it should yep. have started. Yeah, that actually felt pretty good. Uh, and things are going well until the dog showed up. Whoops, that uh -oh. bad. Oh. Oh. Have you ever had him chase fly line? Oh no. Yeah, he's about <laughs> to ruin things for us. Oh. He may be a year older, but he was tireless last year. Oh, brother. <laughs> The cute but pesky dog thought the only purpose of a fly fisherman was to play fetch with him. Oh! And he immediately started pursuing our flies. What he lacked in <laughs> brains, he made up for it with sheer determination. <laughs> He's persistent. We're not really trying to catch this dog, we're trying to avoid catching this dog. Just reel in. The dog okay. won this round and we had to leave. Okay, it's early morning here on the Snake River in southwest Washington. It's a beautiful morning for steelheading. Got some cloud cover, but as you can see, the sun's starting to come up. Got something. Fish on! Got a steely. Yeah, I heard this commotion. I looked downstream and Steve's got a monster steelhead on. Big fish. Yep. That was a pretty cool take. It's just that slow grab that GL was talking to us about. They don't do a, a sharp pull. It's, it's kind of a slow pull on your line, but it's heavy. <laughs> That's nice. That is really nice. That was a huge jump. Oh yeah, it came a couple feet out of the water. I don't know how many, how many pounds, but it's a pretty big fish. And I missed it. Oh, you're moving, huh? Yeah. I'm oh well. The camera. Yeah, that's the way it goes sometimes. Seems like more often than not, that's the way it goes. <laughs> Dang it! I was just skyrocketing. Yeah, that was cool. This fish jumped once early on, but then just a huge jump in the middle of the fight. Of course, Ladd missed it, but. So, what do we do for landing these things, do you uh, think? No idea. After what seemed an eternity, Steve brought the powerful steelhead near. Wow. But the steelhead okay. continued to battle. Boy, that's a nice steely. Okay. Jeez, I don't know. Finally, Steve managed to land the fish. 
I think this is a, a wild steelhead. The adipose fin is on it, so I kept it in the water just in case um, it is a wild steelhead. Look at that beautiful steelhead. That spay fly right in the side of his mouth. That was awesome. Yeah. Okay, it is a wild, at least it's got a adipose clip, so I'm gonna leave it in the water. What a gorgeous, gorgeous fish. Yeah. Probably six pounds, maybe, something like that. I'm thinking so. Okay. There he goes. <laughs> All right. All right. Very nice, <laughs> Steve. Ooh, finally did it. First thing in the morning. Yeah, beautiful fish on a spay fly. I think that's my first fish on a spay fly, maybe. Yeah. Might have caught one on the rond on that before wow. a few years ago, but. Very cool. Oh yeah, very it was just cool. a very cool, you know, just doing the same thing for, I don't know, probably 100 casts so far this morning and finally just this slow pull and a swirl on the end of the line. And uh, excited. Yeah, yeah, and it did a few jumps. And uh, who missed them all? <laughs> yeah, well, I think the first <laughs> ones you'll probably see because it was still on the... Wow. On the, but then the last, the big jump, yeah, you missed. Dang it! Sorry. <laughs> oh, right. great fish. Yeah, thanks. That was fun. A lot of fun. All right, here's the spay fly that GL ties himself here. and He's uh, letting us use and it worked really well. It's awesome. A lot of the steelhead world will just be in shock when we're talking about fishing 20 pound test for fall steelies. Uh, the fish that we stick here have uh, no uh, hook marks. This is their first experience with a lure or fly, so it's really not an issue in our area, and I'm not implying that it isn't in some areas. But for me, it gives you a great cushion for margin of error, but it also uh, gives you uh, a leader that turns over and performs well at the same time. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, Steve, I think you got a Chinook. <laughs> yeah, and he hasn't, he hasn't shown himself. It's a Chinook, I'm pretty sure. He feels, you know, feels pretty heavy. Nice fish. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> oh, man. Good one. What a fish. And good. Yeah, don't put too much heat on him. You don't want to. Yeah, he's about <laughs> done, but not done. I don't like you. And that's what we've been hearing is guys have been dry lining Chinook, which wow. usually get a Chinook to come up to the surface and eat is. It's cool. Pretty rare? Yeah. Well, I've never seen it. Wow. On the we have now. It's seen one, so, with, one on the run. It's fiction with Steve. Yeah, I can see the big old spot. That's gonna be easy eight pound fish. That's, yeah, that's special. Cool, let's release that puppy. Okay. Beauty. I'm gonna hold him into the current until he swims hard and gets away from me. Okay. And that way you know he's got enough energy left. To, but you wanna keep him facing into the current. Don't pump him like all the books say back and forth. <laughs> Just hold him and let him. Get some oxygen. Yeah. And it's coming through his gills. And he'll let you know there'll be water all over my glasses. And... Okay. okay. There he goes. Oh, very nice. Yeah. All right. Thanks, GL. Job. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, GL's been telling me that uh, being first through the hole is really the best. But really, I think what I'm doing is getting the fish all stirred up, and Steve's been coming around behind me and catching all these fish. This was the first time uh, in my guiding or personal experience down here where uh, someone's taken a steelhead and a Chinook in the same day, which is kind of now becoming the Snake River Grand Slam. Uh, I mean, you might be able to throw a sucker in there, but I don't think we're real interested <laughs> in that. But uh, so to get the two game fish in here in the single day is the first time I've ever seen anybody do that. So yeah, pretty cool. You know, I, I might be being paranoid, but uh, GL and Steve are hanging out a lot together and uh, I think he's putting the best flies on his pole. We'll have to pay attention to that. <laughs> best pieces of advice I can give someone getting into this sport 
is don't get into it like you do trout fishing, thinking numbers. It's pretty much come out here. It's a beautiful time of the year to be out. We have great Indian summers and just come out on these rivers and enjoy the very act of being here. The fish are a bonus and the wild fish are even a better bonus than that. And just, I mean, we're sleeping in wall tents with wood stoves, uh, getting up early. We've been on the water since before daylight and you just have a good time. Tip of the week is brought to you by Northwest Outfitters, located at the village at Riverstone in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. This is, uh, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. So, one of the things that we advocate for new new or experienced fishermen is anytime that you can distance yourself from a main road um, or a spot that's fished frequently you know typically your odds of success increase dramatically and and the reason for that is is just when you think that you've walked far enough if you go another quarter of a mile oftentimes you're going to get into to bigger and better fish that uh, typically um, are picked on frequently by the road but again if you can hike back a little bit uh, I think that uh, your chances of catching fish and, and most importantly big fish increase dramatically. And then I'll work my way up into it. Oh yeah. <laughs> that thing oh, barely moved. Get him out of there. Spunky fish. Oh look at them oh, chasing yeah. each other. Chasing. He tried to eat my other bug. Did you see that? Yeah, I would not be so That was pretty funny. He was chasing the 20 incher. Really? Yeah. The fly, the 20 incher. What is this? Wow, he is angry. Let me know if you want me to just. Uh... Ah, I think I'll just okay. pin him off here. Thank you, though. Ah, does he have a little rainbow in him? Yeah, he's, he's angry. Again, turning the fish upside down if they're misbehaving, works really well. He's got a, a touch of rainbow in him. Um, we had a, a steelhead pull that uh, just kind of, or not a pull, a boil behind Ladin's fly. He went back, made one more swing by, um, got nothing, so we're gonna change flies. If that was a moving fish, it won't help us at all. If it's a fish that's in the same spot, a change of fly can actually uh, get it to uh, be interested again. There's thousands of patterns that work equally well. But okay. you wanna show this fish something radically different than what he had in his mouth before, okay. or took a look at before. Yeah. And now if you prick one and it's eating, got him and he's yeah. that fish isn't ever gonna come back. Okay. But if you get either a subtle pull Mm -hmm. or a boil of water behind the fly and you feel nothing, those are the times when you change flies. Okay, perfect. Boy, with this haze coming in, I think we should get up. I think that's, there's gonna be some fish moving through here that pretty soon. Good. Yeah. Oh, geez, Glad's got one. Oh, look at the jump. As soon as this fish hit, it just zoomed downstream and it was in my back in no time. Hey, hey! Ho! Oh! Ho! Oh! It's huge! It's huge! Steve and GL moved like finely tuned athletes, only a lot slower. It took them several minutes to Woo! negotiate the 200 yards. This thing's hot! Oh, it's oh, it's crazy, insane. It sounded like a, a little girl screaming <laughs> downstream from us. And uh, we looked down and the steelhead was about four feet out of the oh! water. And Latin oh! was rod this way, rod that way, reeling like a madman. And then we could hear the reel as the fish kept going. And uh, that was a, a native fish. And they don't always fight better, but seeing that much jumping, I was pretty sure it was gonna end up being a native fish, and it was. But as usual, I managed to maintain my composure. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, fly line, I see fly line. 
I'm really like fast as humanly possible. Wow, man. I saw three jumps, oh. two others. Right? Yeah, oh yeah, it was just insane. Just insane. How'd he hit? Um, pretty much like a ton of bricks, I think. Yeah, I mean, just went from nothing to playing a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, it's just I he jumped four times before I knew he even had him on. <laughs> so, what a fish, huh? Yeah. Oh, Aladdin, it's a squaw fish. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I'm not buying that. And if it was, it'd be a world record. This steelhead's fishing just amazing. It's wild. Wow, what a wild, beautiful. Man. Oh, look at that flash. Okay, GL, coach me in here. Um, you're just gonna reel in just about another foot. Okay, one. And then you're just gonna lean the rod back over this, but again, you can't hold up here. Whoops. You keep both okay. hands on the court. Okay, where do you want it? Lean the tip back this way. Watch your fly in the face. The tension wasn't over until GL had the steelhead firmly in his hands. Oh, nice. He's got a fish. Oh, <laughs> yes. Nice job. Yes. And you know what, GL? I had to admit, I thought you and Steve were in cahoots this whole time, but maybe you weren't. Wow. I quickly removed the fly. Yeah, it's out. That's Man. Pretty mm -hmm. as things get. And look at that big dorsal. <sighs> Beautiful. And adipose on her. And got you guys that steelhead, these wild fish, the hatchery fish you're doing the river a favor to keep. But these fish, if you're, I mean, don't ever take them over land. Yeah. Take them over the water and they are just precious jewels. The adipose is this fin right back where I'm holding her by the wrist and the tail. Glad in my wow. mouth. Woo! What a beauty. Okay, I'm gonna see, I think she's ready to go. Yep, let her go. Very nice. She takes Very my cool. fly again, I'll really be impressed. <laughs> yeah, thanks, GL. Hey, that was awesome. My pleasure. Man, that was worth working for. My pleasure. Holy yeah, smokes. Yeah, you worked hard, GL and I were just taking breaks. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was about That's to right. come in slide the camera down. Yeah, I got a little overexcited. I think the people down in, in uh, <laughs> yeah. down in Southwest Washington will probably wonder what the heck was going on. Yeah. But. <laughs> we had a great time on the Snake River. We enjoyed its rugged beauty and spectacular fighting fish. We had a knowledgeable guide to teach us. And there was even this dog that showed us that with little persistence, we could also win. Well, thanks, GL. That was an awesome trip. Caught some great steelhead today. Cool. Yeah, some days it's better to be lucky than good. <laughs> yeah, today's one of those days. Yep. <laughs> Magic happens sometimes. <laughs> yep. Be sure to join us next time for more Fishing with Latin. Because we're having fun catching fish. <laughs>